Eric Darling here, uh, Darling Data, Enterprise Solution Architects. <laughs> Just kidding. What a goofy, goofy thing to call yourself. <clears throat> In this video, we are going to talk about uh, the set of code that I use to log uh, the wonderful, talented, beautiful, uh, vocally gifted <clears throat> SB who is active uh, to tables um, the views that I create to help you figure out uh, what's going on on your server uh, how I manage retention and uh, the agent job that I provide to get you up and running now, I created all this stuff because this is stuff that I have to do regularly in my client work uh, if they don't have a monitoring tool or to catch things that, you know, other stuff might be, you know, a bit bit overbearing to use like extended events or um, something like that. Folks don't, don't have a monitoring tool. Uh, crazy, crazily enough, some people who are still not on a version of SQL Server where query store is available. Some of this stuff is very, 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 very useful. So, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me. Foggy in here today. So the, the first uh, store procedure in the bunch is uh, one that will create views uh, for you to use behind the scenes. Now, this store procedure gets, there's a reason why this is a store procedure, and there's a reason why this thing gets called every time SB who is active runs, and we'll, we'll sort of talk a little bit about that. So the two views that I create are, uh, so I should take a step back. The way that I do my logging is uh, I don't just keep dumping everything into one giant table because those tables can get out of hand really quickly. It also becomes really hard to search through them unless you add indexes to them to like figure out like you know when something happened right like search through for like dates or whatever um so what i do in this procedure is uh look in sys.tables for uh any new table that the store procedure and again it creates one table per day uh, which also makes managing retention a lot easier so it'll look through sys.tables for any tables with a name that matches the who is active pattern that I create. Uh, and it will essentially create one outer view called dbo.whoisactive with all of those tables sort of un union all together. Right, so you have one view that encapsulates all of the daily tables. The daily tables are called like who is active with like the year, uh, day, and month. And then you have uh, the who is active view, which union all, all those tables together so you don't have to search through like which tables are there and whatever. Uh, you can still uh, obviously select from individual tables if you are interested in something that happened on a particular day at a particular time. That's fine. But again, that's a lot easier to do for a table that only has been logged to for one day rather than for a table that's been logged to for like a week. The other view that I create is uh, one that specifically does a uh, recursive CTE query to enumerate blocking on a server. So the blocking query, uh, it, I mean, it's, it's a long, complicated thing, but you'll see the results in a minute, and I think you'll be fairly enamored with co what comes back. But this is the whole recursive CTE thing, and then I select everything out of that recursive CTE to give you a bunch of good information about uh, the, the blocking queries on your server. Even this can be really useful. Uh, if you, even if you have the block process report set up, the, the minimum threshold for blocking to get logged in it is five seconds. So if you have any, if you have blocking that goes on for less than five seconds or fewer than five seconds, depending on how you think about these things, then, uh, this can be useful to catch that stuff as well. I don't suggest you log SP who is active to a table every second. That would give you a different problem. <laughs> but um, sometimes log, uh, this, the agent job that I give you goes every minute. You are free to adjust that to your, to your needs. All right. So this is the store procedure that creates the views. And again, the reason this is important is because as tables get created daily 
or as tables leave their attention period, we're not going to have them available. Um, we're going to either ha not have them available, or we're going to have new tables available that need to be part of those views. So the outer view here really helps to you know, encapsulate all those daily tables. And then the blocking thing just works off the other view. And I know nested views, bad, horrible, but, you know, uh, I'm a professional, so you can't argue with me. Uh, the second store procedure is the one that does uh, the actual logging. Uh, and this one uh, pretty much does the, follows the instructions in, SP, in the SB who is active documentation to uh, set up a table, set, set up the, the destination table that we're going to log SB who is active to. Right, so it does a bunch of this stuff. It you know concatenates things together nicely, and then it executes who is active and we tell the store procedure we want to log you to a table. So uh, we give you so we get that stuff and so we get all the parameters right in there, uh, and then uh, this is what does the actual logging to a table. Right, this is what does the actual logging that sets up the table and gets all the stuff that we need set up for it. This does the actual logging, and then. Uh, this store procedure runs uh, to manage retention. So uh, by default, I keep 10 days worth of uh, SP who is active tables on there. You are free to, uh, to, to, uh, to change that to your whims and fancies. All right. So first we delete any tables that are outside of our retention period. And then if we have created any new tables again, because they are daily tables, uh, then this, the who is active logging procedure to create views gets run to uh, recreate the view definition so that we make sure that we're only looking at the correct set of tables uh, when, we, when we select from our view so that we don't get weird errors. Or we don't get weird errors when the view tries to get created either. That's, that would be terrible, wouldn't it? I wouldn't like that. Uh, <clears throat> the third store procedure is the one that manages retention. So this one builds up uh, a string, uh, essentially drop table for any uh, tables that match the who is active pattern that I create that fall outside the retention period. All right. So good stuff there. Okay. This one's pretty short and sweet and to the point, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Uh, you'll just have to trust me that it works. If, uh, if you don't feel like reading all the code. And all of this code is available freely in my GitHub repo. So if you decide to, you wanna check it out, there's a link in the video description to, for you to go do that. And if you find any issues with it, if you wanna make any improvements to it, uh, you can't because I'm a professional and you can't. You can't, you can't reason with me. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm very happy to get GitHub issues. Uh, either to answer questions, get, get uh, performance, report bugs, things like that. Uh, the final <clears throat> uh, piece of code that I give you is to set up the agent job to run SP who is active. Now again, this will get this will um, this will get you every minute, right? This will execute every single minute, right? So it's just pretty stock agent job creation stuff, agent schedule creation stuff. There's nothing all that new, brave, or interesting in here. Uh, this'll just, you know, this is just a quick and easy way for me to hit F5 and get all the right stuff in place. So uh, when, when, I, when I need to do this for clients, I don't have to sit there and, you know, remember to tick the right boxes and set things at the right interval and all that. So four neat pieces of code built on a very neat piece of code, code, not cold, called SP who is active. And the results are pretty useful. So uh, this is the main who is active view right here. Uh, and if we select star from this and we just say order by collection time, collection time is a column way over here that isn't part of like the stock and standard who is active results. Uh, this collection time is one that specifically gets used so you know when these things got logged to a table. Uh, but if we order that by collection time and then say CPU descending, because, you know, we can say, let's say we care the most about high CPU queries on a server, uh, we will get all of the standard SP who is active results back, except log to a table, all right? So we get all this fun stuff in there, uh, from, you know, again, this is just from a couple runs that I did of the, uh, of the, of the, of the agent job while, while I had some stress on the server. Uh, I didn't want to do it live because, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, again, the, the, the labor pains and the baby. Here's the baby. 
Okay, cool. Now, what we can do, oh my goodness, I forgot to alias that. Someone, someone fire a SQL prompt. All right, so if we uh, look at the SP who is active blocking, uh, granted I did not do anything too ambitious here uh, because I really just wanted to get this uh, recorded and available for you to uh, consume and digest and, uh, well, excrete in some way. Hopefully some useful way that makes your job and life easier and, I don't know, helps you track down some problems. But uh, what this gives you back, and this is, again, what that whole big recursive view query that I showed you earlier in the video does, is uh, gives you how long things were going on for. Uh, it tells you uh, the SPID and the date that things happened, which is useful information. Uh, if we come over here, uh, we can see the weights that were in place of so the query getting blocked was waiting on LCKMIS. This was waiting on sleep, B-pool B steel, well, and some other stuff too. Uh, I like to get as much information into these uh, into, into this stuff as possible because uh, I'm not doing it live and I don't know what I'm going to need to troubleshoot so I'd like to get as much stuff in there as I can so that I don't have to say crap I missed it because um, nothing breaks confidence in a consultant like them saying crap I missed it so we get all this stuff back um, I get, uh, with like you know the normal uh, blocking stuff uh, that lovely new implicit tran column uh, you know, open transaction count, collection time, all that other stuff that we sort of talked about before. Uh, again, we've talked about this in, uh, in a previous SP Who Is Active video, but this is the get additional info column where you can see exactly which object we were waiting on locks to be released from so that we could do our read query. Um, but yeah, this is a sort, this is what the blocking view gives you. If there were more blocking in here, we would have, you know, additional things uh, showing us other lead blockers or other queries that were blocked. So again, nothing too ambitious here, just enough to sort of give you an idea of what to expect from the results. So with that, all that being said, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you learned something. I hope you'll try these scripts out. Uh, they, I've had a lot of very good luck with them. Uh, helping clients find weird issues with SQL Server. So hopefully, hopefully you can, uh, you know, with your clients or your, uh, your, your, your employer, you can do the same thing. Um, if, if you enjoy this sort of stuff, if you enjoy uh, my videos or me or, um, I don't know, if you, if you just need something to fall asleep to, like and subscribe. Uh, I'm here for you. Can be, I can be your, I can be your lullaby, uh, and um, let's see, we covered thank you, covered like and subscribe, covered all the code, covered. Uh, I don't think there's anything else, is there? No. All right. It is eight minutes until five o'clock. Uh, I think that's that's close enough for me to have a start start having glasses of wine. So. Uh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll just go do that and, um, save, save other videos for tomorrow. All right. Cool. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching.